let's <laughs> move into it. So this is uh, the usual uh, slide I have to show you. Uh, this is uh, something we, we, we need to do, so don't, don't uh, take what I, I say you uh, to the bank. That, that, that's it. So uh, I will just ask you, please raise, raise your hand. Who has uh, an experience with, with, with REST architectural style? Not, not, not much. Uh, who has uh, some experience with JAX RS? Okay. Jersey? Okay, few people. So uh, I will give you a, a really a very short primer of what REST is and then we'll move on uh, to the uh, JAX RS uh, stuff. So REST is uh, an architectural style uh, which should, uh, if, you, if you stick with it, uh, it should uh, provide you uh, some, some good outcome uh, related to uh, the design of your application. So uh, your application should be scalable, uh, uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, the currently the, uh, the, the web uh, World Wide Web is, and uh, here is the, the, the key aspects or the, the key kind of constraints you need to stick with in order to uh, stay with REST. So you have to assign everything uh, an ID, you have to link things together, uh, you have to use a uniform interface, so like uh, on, the, on the web you have uh, only limited set of methods available like HTTP GET, HTTP POST, HTTP PUT, DELETE and so on. Uh, and uh, you have to allow uh, to work with an exchange multiple representations of the data and then you have to stick with stateless communication. And if you uh, really uh, obey these rules, you will get uh, application which will uh, have a desired uh, behavior and uh, b will, will work uh, fine with you in distributed environment. So, uh, what is JAXRS? It's part of uh, Java EE. So, currently, uh, JAXRS version 1.1 .1 is part of Java EE 6. Uh, it's quite uh, widely adopted uh, API. Uh, we have uh, about seven implementations of the API, so it's, it's really uh, widely used, uh, adopted. It's uh, uh, server-centric, it's POSO-based, uh, annotation-driven API. Uh, it claims that uh, you don't have uh, any container independence, so you can use JAXRS stuff even outside of uh, Java EE application servers. And uh, it also doesn't have uh, any uh, dependency on the, on the entity format. So uh, what I will show you is a demonstration of the JAXRS 1.1 stuff. So what, uh, something what you can use uh, today already. So let me switch to NetBeans, and we go. So what I have here is a simple uh, JAXRS resource, which will be published at uh, the session path. It will be consuming uh, application uh, XML uh, media type and text plane media type. Uh, it will produce uh, the, the very same media types, and it has just two simple uh, methods. Uh, one, the get session method will be mapped to the HTTP get uh, using the add get annotation, and the other one uh, will be uh, mapped to the HTTP put method using this add put annotation, and uh, it just keeps a, a single uh, session uh, variable where it stores information uh, on on session. Uh, so it's it's. You know, JAXRS 1.1 stuff, nothing special here. Uh, uh, the, the session being I can show you here, it's just a data data object. So I have an ID, title, speaker, capacity, hash code, equals, uh, and a constructor. Nothing else, really, nothing, nothing really special. Uh, I have a message body writer and reader for this session being so that I can uh, write out uh, text and I can, I can also parse text representations of the session, but that's, that's basically it. And uh, it, it's really uh, already uh, possible to uh, write this stuff with JAXRS 1.1. So let's, let's try to run the application. 
and I'll show you how, how, how it works. Oops, address already in use. I have another instance already running, so I will just stop it. Try again. Oops. So let me just kill it from, from the command line. Uh, okay. So it's it's probably this one. Now I can return back to NetBeans and tie again. Okay, so it's it started. I, I haven't started any application server. So I, I'm using a Grizzly container here. So you, you see that Jaxares is really uh, container independent. It could be used outside of uh, outside of Java E, and uh, maybe I can I can show up uh, in browser. So it's published localhost uh, 88 and the the path was session. So. I'm getting the XML representation of the session bean. Uh, I can I can even use the put method, but I, I'm not going to to show that. So that that's that's JaxRS one dot one. It's available already, and uh, that's all what I'm going to say about JaxRS one one dot one. So now. Uh, this is stuff that people already heavily heavily use, and uh, what was missing from their uh, point of view, and uh, what they want to 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 have included in the next version uh, in JaxRS uh, 2.0. So there are several areas. First one is client API. It's really missing. JaxRS one was uh, server centric, so client API is uh, really uh, wanted in this area. Uh, filters and interceptors, and I will cover uh, each uh, each of these uh, areas uh, in detail uh, in a moment. Validation, so that uh, you can validate the data as uh, you exchange them. Asynchronous processing, I'll also show. Hypermedia, server-side content negotiation, uh, JSR uh, 330, uh, dependency injection and MVC. So uh, these are the areas uh, that people were missing at JaxRS 1.1. So what happened? Uh, there was established uh, an expert group to to uh, work on the next version of uh, on JaxRS 2.0. Uh, it's almost uh, two years ago. Uh, here you can see the, 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 the people involved in the, uh, in the EG, and uh, currently the, the spec is uh, in the stage of uh, the public review. So it means that uh, all, all the, all, almost all the work was done and uh, the specification is almost final. Uh, in November there, there, there will be a, a public ballot on you know, uh, whether the, the spec will be uh, approved or, or not. So uh, what made it into JaxRS 2.0? What, what areas? So client API uh, was, uh, was selected and uh, made it in, as well as filters and interceptors. Uh, validation, uh, there is a question mark. I will uh, come to that later. Asynchronous processing is also available there included in the API hypermedia as well. Uh, server content type, uh, co um, uh, content type negotiation as well. Uh, but dependency injection and MVC didn't, didn't uh, get in. I will, I will uh, tell you why uh, after I cover the topics uh, that were uh, selected. So we'll start with the client API. So why? People wanted to, to get some client support uh, into JaxRS. Uh, there is a bunch of uh, libraries already in Java that allows you to, uh, to consume uh, HTTP stuff, to consume uh, REST uh, services. Uh, but uh, you know, 
they are not not really uh, well uh, suited to uh, to to fit into into the picture. Some of them are uh, too low level. Uh, in the in the current implementations, uh, also uh, there were the client APIs uh, which were able to reuse some uh, server side stuff like message body writers and readers. So that was uh, another uh, reason uh, for uh, including this client API in, in the in the standard. Uh, in the following slide, I will show you uh, what you can you can you can expect and you, you can get already. I have a live demonstration right after this slide. So uh, the client API uh, works with the concept of client factory, where uh, you can get a client uh, from. Of course, the client factory and the client could be uh, configured. So it has a, a configuration bound to it. And uh, from the client, you can get uh, web targets. Uh, you can see that uh, from one target, I can uh, drill down. I can I can pass uh, another path uh, in and uh, can can uh, get another web targets. So again, the targets, the web targets are configurable. So we can configure, uh, for instance, message body workers uh, separate to to each uh, web target and also other stuff. Uh, from the web target, uh, you can you can uh, take an invocation builder that will allow you to uh, either directly get the response. So with invocation builder, it has some some methods to directly invoke the, uh, an HTTP method, or you can build an invocation for later use. So you can you can build a, a batch uh, kind of uh, structures. Uh, that will allow you to, to populate the invocations uh, well in advance and then to, to run them. So this is uh, kind of to, to, to give you a, a, a picture on how the client API uh, looks like. And now I will switch back to NetBeans and show you how to consume the service I've just uh, run uh, with the JaxRS 2.0 client API. So uh, I have a, uh, another uh, class client uh, application here with the uh, with the pre-baked uh, main method. So I, I need to write something here. So I will I will start with the client uh, factory. Now uh, from the client factory I can I can get a new client. I can of course use a, a configuration object. I don't need anything special, so I will just create a new client. And maybe I can just uh, store it uh, to a variable. OK, so I, I got a client. And now uh, I can, from the client, uh, try to see if I can uh, get a web target. So I will provide uh, a URI to it. I will take it from the, the application. So the application is up, and it is a, a publicly available root uh, URI, which I will be accessing. So from, from that, uh, I need to access the session resource. So again, uh, I am invoking the, the target method. I am passing the session uh, session. Oops, it's, it should be path. Um, the the, the, the JaxRS is still evolving. So now I, I got another web target. And uh, what I can do now is I can just uh, create a request. So I will be requesting, uh, I, can, I can ask for uh, application XML media type. And I will just uh, invoke it so that I, I get a response. So now uh, I got a response. And to, to prove that I am actually uh, making a request, I will, I will uh, print out uh, maybe I can 
print out a status code uh, and the data probably so like 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 so and respond response as the status code so I will get the status and I will read uh, the data so I will be fine with with the string so now I can I can run the application run this class and see what I what I get So I hope uh, you can see it even from the uh, from the back. Okay, so uh, let me let me uh, quickly reiterate. So I got a, a new client from the client factory. I got a web target from the application uh, root U URI. Then I, I got another one, another target uh, pointing to the to the session resource. I uh, create uh, an invoker uh, uh, invocation builder uh, requesting the application .xml media type, and I invoked the uh, the HTTP method, and I, I got the, the response. Back, I, I can I can try a similar thing with uh, the text representation so now I will just rerun the the client and I got the textual representation of uh, what I had uh, there uh, before so uh, to, to give you a clue on how the configuration works on the client side so uh, let me uh, change back so I'm requesting uh, text plane, so I can I can probably again switch back to application and show you show you that I can reuse uh, the message body reader. This is uh, available for the server side. So now instead of uh, instead of uh, you know getting a string uh, textual representation of the out of the response. So what I will do is I will just ask for the for the title. So instead of string, I will be requesting uh, the the session bean to be uh, serialized out for me, and from that session bean, I will just take the title and print it out. So let me run this again, and you see that I only got the the title, and it's because. Uh, I'm reusing the the server side message body reader on the on the client side, and I'm able to parse the data the, the data that are coming, and I'm getting the the session instance uh, populated uh, from the uh, from the wire. So now I have a question. So what what happens if I here if I switch back to the textual representation? Does anybody know what what happens now? Please raise your hand. Pardon? Yeah, an exception. And why? Do you know why? Uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. So I will just run it, and voila, an exception is here. So the client doesn't know how to, uh, given that the server has the special message body writer for the session bean and and the text plane, the client doesn't have anything to tell him uh, to tell it how to deserialize the data. So what I will do, I have the client here, and I will just configure the client to re reuse the message body uh, reader from the. Uh, from the the server, so I will just uh, register the uh, the the session message body. It's text body worker. 
So I'm just registering the, the server side message body uh, worker on the client so that I can, you know, reuse it. I, I don't need to write it again. And now I can try to rerun. So now I'm able on the client side to reuse uh, the server side message body uh, reader and I'm able to uh, to deserialize the, the session uh, the session be uh, just right. So that's what I wanted to, to show you about the client. And uh, let's get back to the to the presentation. Okay. So that was the demo. Next one is filters and interceptors. Uh, if you used JaxRS uh, before uh, for some real life application, you know that uh, there are some parts missing and uh, this is one of them that every and each implementation solved uh, in its own way. So for instance, Jersey provided uh, its own API for, oops. Excuse me. No, I don't know how to. Okay, so what now? Hmm. I don't know what, what now. So uh, with filters and interceptors, so yeah, you see that. Sorry, I, I wasn't seeing anything here on, on this on this screen. So let me just quickly skip this stuff. And uh, so the filters and interce interceptors should allow you uh, to do stuff like uh, logging, uh, uh, security, so that you can you can, uh, for instance, encode the data as you uh, send them out. Uh, you should be able to compress data and. Uh, these, uh, these uh, things uh, really uh, weren't well supported in the existing JaxRS 1.1 stuff, 1.1 uh, API. So uh, in JaxRS 2.0, uh, what we got is a support for filters and interceptors. And uh, there is a new API introduced for both client and server side. So uh, what uh, JaxRS 2.0 uh, comes with is uh, the concept of uh, container request filter, con the client request filter, uh, container response uh, and client response filters, and also uh, interceptors. So uh, what's the difference between the filter and the interceptor? The filter works with the, the whole uh, request or uh, response, while the interceptor uh, work, uh, works only uh, with the message body. Uh, so uh, the, the main difference is that uh, if you don't need to, I don't know, tweak uh, headers, you don't need to maybe change the HTTP method in the in the in incoming request. When you only need to uh, somehow work with the with the message body only if the runtime happens to to deal with the message body, then you probably want to uh, to introduce an interceptor. So on the slide, uh, you, you see how the API is uh, being utilized. So uh, the interceptors are invoked only if the message body is, is worked with, uh, while the filters are run uh, with each and every request or response uh, uh, for a particular uh, resource. Uh, so uh, for the interceptors, there is a common API for client and server. Uh, there is a reader interceptor for both server and client, and there is a writer interceptor for both uh, server and uh, client. Uh, there is a, a possibility uh, to set a priority on uh, the interceptor and the filter so that you can uh, you can chain them chain them in a particular order and uh, you can also 
on the server side have some uh, kind of special treatment of uh, uh, filters uh, that you really want to to be uh, to be invoked for for each request uh, as it comes in before uh, the resource has been matched uh, for the for the request so uh, there is the uh, the the, the pre-matching uh, uh, kind of annotation so that uh, you don't need to to bind the the filters to uh, particle resources think uh, I will show you uh, how, how it looks in uh, in, the, in the code so here what you do is you define a special uh, custom uh, locked uh, annotation I use the at name binding JAXRS uh, annotation to to, to, to to tag it and then uh, you uh, use this at locked annotation uh, on your uh, logging filter so this way you mark the, the, the filter uh, with, the, with your custom annotation. And uh, then you can use the add locked uh, annotation on a particular resource method that you want uh, to be intercepted by the filter. So this is the way how you, how you register uh, the filter only on a selected set of uh, resource methods and how we can uh, define your custom annotations in order to, to do so. So the, uh, the, the logging filter now will be invoked on uh, you know, every request that will be matched to this uh, hello Java method. Okay. So I uh, think the, the code was self-descriptive uh, and I'm uh, slightly running out of time, so uh, I will uh, talk some, tell something about the validation. So validation, uh, there is a separate API in Java EE uh, area for validation. There is a, a kind of a heated discussion whether this uh, should come in or not uh, into, into JAXRS 2.0. So uh, the, the current kind of plan is to omit it uh, for now for version 2.0 and then maybe edit later on uh, when th there will be a maintenance release of uh, JAXRS uh, uh, 2. So I, I, will, I will not spend uh, much time on this uh, because uh, as I said it, it, it's probably going to be uh, dropped uh, off uh, the specification. So I will quickly show the asynchronous processing because I, I believe this is really uh, an area which is uh, which is important. So uh, let me maybe uh, get back to NetBeans and show you uh, an example on how uh, or why this is this is important. Okay. So now uh, I'm getting back to the to the session uh, resource and here. No, no, no. It's session session resource is here, and uh, I uh, will try to. Uh, prolong the uh, the processing of this of this uh, method. So I will add uh, a two second uh, pause here. Okay, like like so. So now instead of uh, getting back to the client uh, right away with the session being, uh, I will just sleep for two two seconds, right? So we'll show you from the command line how, how, how it works. So if I, if I want to get the session information now, OK, I, I didn't stop the application. And uh, I need to rerun it again. Uh, I guess this will, this will do. OK, so it's restarted. So now, one, two, OK, I got the data. So now, what happens if I uh, do this kind of long-running uh, operation, and if I, if I, if I run uh, multiple clients in parallel? Let's say I will, I will uh, run uh, 100, 100 clients in parallel. Let me just copy it from, from here. So does, does anybody 
know what will what will happen now. Okay. And why am I running out of threads? And there is a bonus point for this. Uh huh. Busy incoming request. So I think I can I can <laughs> take this. It's not vodka. It's not Slovitsa. No methanol in it. <laughs> so okay. So uh, 100 clients running in parallel. Now I will try to see if I have something still to to do. Okay. Let me count it. So still four clients. Uh, Waiting, it was more than two seconds. It was much more than two seconds. If I run maybe 200 clients, I can try to to see how many clients are still waiting. Okay, it's going slightly down, but it should be much better. Okay, so the reason is that I have a limited uh, limited number of threads uh, that are uh, serving the clients, and all these threads are uh, busy with the first uh, maybe five clients. So the other connections have to wait. So I'm serving uh, maybe five clients at a time, then another five clients, and so on and so on. So that, there must be a better way how to how to solve this. So for this, uh, uh, JAXA has to uh, uh, introduce uh, kind of uh, asynchronous processing. So I will show you how to implement it on the server side. So uh, what I will do, I, I, I won't uh, return a session right away from this method. So this is now, now not needed. But uh, I will need uh, an executor. So I will create uh, an executor service. Uh, let me fix the, the imports. OK. I, I will create my, my own uh, uh, thread pool. It's, it's not important. I, I just need to offload the, the threads that are serving the, the incoming requests. So that's, that's important. So now, what I will I will do, I will uh, ask the, the runtime to inject me uh, the async response to, to my, to my uh, Java, Java method. And with this uh, response uh, suspended, I can offload the current thread uh, to this executor. And then, when I get uh, the, the answer, I can resume the response with the with the result. So what I will do instead of uh, what I'm doing now, I will just uh, take the executor and execute a, a new uh, runnable here, like so. I need to implement a run method. And what I will do, OK, still, uh, I don't need to sleep necessarily. Uh, you probably want to, to do some you know, really important work here. But once I get the, the, the result, I can just take the, the, the response. Was it response? Yeah. And resume it with the, with the, uh, with the result. Something's wrong. OK, I need to make it final, like so. So now, now uh, I will rerun and try to run the 200 clients again. One, two. And now we'll try to count the, the, the clients still waiting, zero. So uh, you, you, you have seen uh, how. I, I, I use the, the JAXRS means to help me solve the situation, which otherwise would be really hard to, uh, hard to uh, resolve. So I've uh, injected a suspended uh, async response and uh, somehow managed, and this is not a pattern. I just wanted to show you really quickly. 
you need to somehow offload the, the current thread and let it go and serve uh, the other clients. So that's the idea. Let me get back to the to the presentation. I don't know how, how much time do we do we have left? Ten minutes still. Okay, that's that's good. That's good. So. Uh, so uh, again, uh, the, 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 the thing is that uh, you don't kill the connection, but you have only limited set of threads, and uh, you want to offload them. And that's, that's, what, that's what to do on the, on the server side. Uh, there might be some proprietary APIs uh, coming into the implementations, like what we have in Jersey, the, the managed async, uh, to really uh, help you not to uh, need to, I don't know, manage the, 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 the thread pools and other stuff. So that was the server side. On the, on the client side, uh, you also have a, a possibility to uh, code a non-blocking client. So uh, you either uh, get a future from the client when you uh, make uh, an invocation, or uh, you can register an invocation callback uh, that will be invoked uh, when, the, when the client gets the response from the server. So that's, uh, that's uh, for the non-blocking asynchronous processing. Uh, the demo you have seen already. Now, hypermedia. So uh, this is one of the key uh, principles uh, of, of REST, that uh, you uh, give things IDs and you connect them together. So now, uh, what kind of uh, links uh, you, you can see in the, in the real uh, world? Uh, we found out that uh, there are two kind of kinds of links. Uh, one is the uh, you know transitional links that you can see in the HTTP headers that uh, refer the client to another kind of resource to to proceed, and we call them transitional links. And another kind of uh, links is uh, uh, so-called structure links. Uh, these are uh, included inside the data structures, and uh, they only serve to uh, maybe lower uh, the, the payload. Uh, the, the you know so that you don't don't need to exchange that 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 much data. Uh, so regarding uh, JaxRS 2.0, uh, we got pretty good support for the the, uh, the the former, the transitional links, and the, here you. See here you can see uh, what 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 kind of uh, new types you get into the API. So link and link builder, uh, so that you can you can build the links. There is also uh, support for for this in the response builder, so that you can on the server side uh, plug the links into into the responses. And there is a limited uh, support for the structure links, uh, like you see on the slide. And I will I will show you. Uh, the code here. So this is the server side. So uh, you don't need to, to, to know the URI, the exact URI on the server side, but you can still build a link uh, from your resources. So you can refer uh, to each other. And you can incorporate these, uh, these links into uh, the responses, uh, like, like you can see. Now on the client side, uh, this is an example on how to consume the link and how to process further. So here you, you, you got a response uh, that contained a, a link uh, called ship. And uh, you can directly uh, build another uh, request uh, for that link. So they just to, to give you an idea on how, how these uh, things uh, work. Uh, last thing that I wanted to cover is server-side content negotiation. So the idea is that uh, with HTTP, the client uh, dictates the server, or give me XML, give me text, give me HTML. It's always the client who decides what kind of representation will be uh, retrieved back from the, from the server. And sometimes uh, the client just doesn't care. As you can see here, the accept header has text slash star. 
meaning that the client really doesn't care as long as the, uh, the, the media type starts with text slash. So uh, with JaxRS2, uh, the server now has uh, an opportunity to, uh, to say, OK, so as long as the, the client doesn't care, uh, for me, text HTML is better than text slash plain. So I will just provide text slash HTML back. And uh, this is supported in JaxRS 2.0 already. OK, so uh, I have uh, five last minutes. So I was asked to show you this slide. Uh, Oracle is opening a new development office here in Krakow. So we are hiring. We are hiring developers, uh, Java developers, .NET developers, uh, QA people. Uh, people asked where is the office going to be located or where is it located? There are already some people in there. So you can see the address there. And there is a booth outside uh, that you can visit and uh, get some more details. So there are two, two uh, colleagues uh, which will be happy to, to uh, Give you give you more information on, on this matter, and now I have uh, maybe three minutes for any questions that you uh, might happen to to have. So any questions? I would like to go back to this example with asynchronous processing. Uh -huh. um, I didn't notice if there was a response returned immediately to the client who was uh, fetching the, issuing the query, or it was something else. Because I, I didn't get the idea whether the response is returned immediately, or uh, the, the real response, or, or there's some kind of uh, um, identifier sent to the client that the client should uh, no. ask later for the real response? The, the client doesn't uh, see any difference. So for the client, the connection stays open for the two seconds. And after you know, the, the timeout or, or whatever, the response is uh, you know, gotten back. But there is no kind of communication uh, between the client and server in between. So this is really only about the, the server side and about the, the threads serving, uh, you know, the selected threads serving the, the request to, to be uh, uh, freed up and to be able to, to do something else. OK. I, I so the, from, from, the, from the Java method <laughs> perspective, there is a void. So the method, you know, returns, you know, just, just after submitting the, the, the new runnable to the threat executor. What about uh, uh, server uh, thread pool? Uh, it's it's separate from from this. Uh, as, as you can see, okay, I'm maintaining my yeah, new new okay. new pool. Mm, I see that you are creating. You have an executor, so you are creating another. Uh, I'm creating track. another pool, right? Okay, but it has nothing to do with the selector thread pool. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so if. There is no other question. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much.